Terry says, if we were to get one of the Zoomers, who will read the results? If just trying to get a diagnosis, which one would you recommend starting with? Michelle? Me, me, me. I will read the results, <laughs> which I love. And I'm going to share screen. I saw this one coming. And I'm going to just show these and just kind of walk you through my thought process on this. But I love that you asked because it's such a great question. So in order to get the significantly reduced price, you need to order at least four tests. So um, the first one that everyone wants to order is wheat. And some of you are thinking, but I don't eat wheat. I don't eat gluten. Why do I want to order wheat zoomer? because it's a report card to see how well your gluten and wheat-free lifestyle is working. And over 90% of the people that I meet with that are thinking that they're gluten and wheat-free um, still have elevated antibodies. So you wanna see like, is this working? Is it enough? Or do I need to step it up and make sure that even my skincare and shampoo and conditioner and chapstick and lipstick and toothpaste. Do you know that a, a lot of the toothpaste out there is not gluten-free and that can still be preventing you from fully healing? So that gives us so much insight. Plus it has the most um, advanced intestinal permeability panel available. So um, we'll do a deep dive on that. Um, that's where we spend the most time. And then the rest of the test, um, I think it can be helpful to know like what what are you eating? What are you most concerned about? Um, and Dairy Zoomer is one that I highly recommend. I highly recommend Lectin Zoomer um, because there's quite a few things that show up on the Neural Zoomer Plus that can be linked to lectin aquaporin sensitivity. So um, those tests, corn Zoomer, there's a corn wheat overlap epitope and some people went gluten-free, started eating tons of corn, and that corn is tricking the body into thinking it's still getting exposed to wheat. And it's what's lighting up your wheat zoomer and preventing you from healing. Um, and it's so many different peptides of corn that they're looking at. Plus both corn and soy have an antigen to show if you're reacting to the genetic we modified portion of that food and most soy and corn, unfortunately, at least in the US is um, GMO, GMO crops. Egg zoomer, tons of egg sensitivity. I also see quite a bit of nut because everyone switched out from cow dairy to almond milk and then all the paleo treats with the almond flour and they have intestinal permeability and they're powering down the almonds. <laughs> We've all done it. Um, so I see um, quite a bit of that. You know, peanut, if you're not willing to give up peanuts, then do a peanut zoomer. But when I look at peanuts, peanuts are so full of aflatoxins. They're such a problematic food that if you are um, not healthy and well, um, then just leave out peanuts because it's just not worth it. Now, if you've given up cow dairy, but you want to know if you can have goat or sheep or camel's milk, that's mammalian milk zoomer. And grain zoomer, so you've you know eliminated gluten and you want to know, is it okay? Is it safe for you to have rice or um, quinoa or... Um, what are some of the other buckwheat, teff, then um, that's a uh, grain zoomer. So, but probably my top, if I was to pick four, um, and I wanna hear your top four too, Dr. Tom. Like wheat zoomer is top one. It's just a non-negotiable, it, it always gets ordered because we would need to see if your intestinal permeability is 30 fold out of range or twofold out of range. That's really important. Don't listen to these people that just say, well, everyone has intestinal permeability because it's just not true, right? And then not everybody has the same level. A lot of people have intestinal permeability because of all the chaos going on in our food supply. Um, but, and there's so many contributors to intestinal permeability, right, Dr. Tom? I mean, Stress, alcohol, genetically modified food, over-the-counter meds, prescription meds. Yeah, here's a point on that, that 
if you have a intestinal permeability that comes back 30 fold out of range and you apply all these principles, these guidelines and six months or a year later, you do it again and you've got an intestinal permeability that's positive, it's five fold out of range. It's easy to think, oh, this isn't working. I still got a problem. No, it was 30 fold out of range. You're getting better. You're celebrating. Take a while, right? So that you monitor your improvement levels. And if you're not improving, something's wrong with the protocol you're doing. You're missing something. So my top ones would be wheat, uh, dairy, uh, lectin, and corn. If I had to pick four, and actually it's wheat, Zoomer, NeuroZoomer Plus, but that's not part of the packages. I don't, Michelle, is it part of any of the packages? No, it's a separate test. It's a separate test, but critically important in my book is uh, wheat Zoomer and NeuroZoomer Plus. And to get the discount for the food test, wheat, corn, lectin, um, and dairy. Those are the top four that I would look at. Uh, depending on someone's lifestyle, if they're eating eggs four or five times a week, maybe it would be more important to do eggs than corn. But if they're gluten-free and they're eating something made with corn, corn pasta or corn breads um, two, three, four times a week, then I may want to do the corn. So it depends on the individual and their lifestyle. Right. And if you can um, afford to do five of them, the egg zoomer is a really uh, valuable add. Definitely. And then for the bonuses, let's see where the, here's the bonus test. So this neural zoomer has nine um, antigens. So it's 18 antibodies, but it's because it's IgA and IgG. So it's looking at nine different antigens where the neural zoomer plus is looking at 48. So you're getting so much more information. This has one marker neural zoomer of blood brain barrier permeability where the um, NeuroZoomer Plus has four. So if you can afford to do the NeuroZoomer Plus, um, go for that. And if you can't, then NeuroZoomer can be helpful to kind of sleuth out, um, you know, even those nine, if anything's out of range there, it can be a lot more motivating to really get the gluten out. Food additives is um, a great add-on because um, I think, I mean, I was a little, cocky, Dr. Tom, because I don't eat processed food. And I'm like, Psh, my food additives is going to come back perfectly clean. And I had sorbitol elevated and my toothpaste had sorbitol in it and um, BPA because we're just like bombarded with BPA. It's coding cash register receipts. It's, you know, I'm like no more plastic water bottles for me. Not worth it. Right. Even when I'm traveling. Um, so it just can be really enlightening that, you know, we're still getting exposed to things that are activating our immune system. And if we really focus on getting those out, um, it can really help with healing. IBS sure, if you think you have small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, um, that can be a really important screening tool. The breath test is um, difficult to do, <laughs> and it's often unreliable. Uh, the sensitivity and specificity or the accuracy I've heard is about 50%. So that can be a tough one. And then food sensitivity one and two, these are panels that are looking at the whole protein structure of the food. If you've got a lot of intestinal permeability, you're likely going to be sensitive to a lot of different foods. So I usually recommend holding off on food sensitivity one and two so we get a wheat zoomer, see what your level of intestinal permeability, see what's going on with some of these other big foods, corn, lectins, eggs, uh, soy, dairy, right? Because I have yet to have anyone come back to me, Dr. Tom, and be like, Michelle, I eliminated zucchini and it's amazing. Like I'm healed. My Lyme went away. All the mold issues went away and the metriosis cleared. I just had, it hasn't happened, right? So these foods become collateral damage. And if you have extreme intestinal permeability, you may be sensitive to 60 of the 96 foods. And now we're down to 36 foods. And what if we pull out those 60, how soon before you become sensitive to those 36, right? So 
gut intestinal permeability, we're going to talk about food rotations, lots of variety, not eating eggs every morning for breakfast. You wonder why you have an egg sensitivity and you're literally eating eggs and processed food all day long and eating eggs every morning for breakfast and you've got intestinal permeability. So that's kind of an overview. What else do you want to add to this, Dr. Tom? I think that's a great, really great overview. And what you demonstrate, Michelle, is that diagnosis is an art. It's an investigative art with the individual. You know, everyone's going to be a little different. There are some common principles to begin with, like Wheat Zoomer, Neural Zoomer Plus are the two big ones for us to begin with. But then it depends on the individual as to where, where do you go from there in your examination. And as you were talking, I was thinking that for so many people out there, just listening to this, this is a paradigm shift. This is a different way of thinking. This is like, all right, do a blood test. Tell me what's wrong, what to take, so I'm going to be better. And what it, it often doesn't work that way. You know, there are so many pieces of the puzzle that have to be addressed. You go for the big offenders first and you knock those out. You get those out of there. You, you work on and address the intestinal permeability. Six months or a year later, you say, you know what? I'm doing so much better than I was. I forgot how bad I was until I looked at my notes and I'm doing so much better, but I still have this and this and this. And then you can dive down into some of the nitpicky stuff. That, but you don't start with a, a food panel one for 90 foods or food, food panel two. It, it, it's just too overwhelming when it comes back and you're sensitive to 30 foods. You know, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't give us the most bang for the buck. Right, exactly. It can be really helpful, though, down the road if we're still not getting... Um, complete healing and then we find out they're sensitive to maybe five things and coconut's one of them and they're having coconut yogurt every day and cooking in coconut oil and right. like too much coconut then we can take a break from coconut allow the body to reset and then add coconut back in but that's when I find those tests really helpful.